Good afternoon, my name is Audrey M. Ryan Beardsley. I'm an associate professor at Arizona State University. We have created a show at Arizona State called Inside the Academy, during which we honor some of our members of the National Academy of Education and other educational scholars and leaders across the country. Today, we are talking with Dr. John Goodlad and in admiration of him and his work over the years. You were born in 1920 in British Columbia, Canada. Tell us about your family and childhood. Mm -hmm. um, my father, well, for, for my parents were from the, the um, Shetland, the Shetland Islands, which were a, very, a small part of Scotland. And um, They, why in the world the people uh, like being in Scotland like that would make the trip of going by boat, going by train, going by another train, going by a boat, coming to the east coast of North America, getting on a train, spend quite a lot of time with, tr with, with trains with their coal and whatnot that ran them, and uh, came all the way across the country into the town of Vancouver. And that, why did that happen all down the coast in, 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 um, uh, in, in, in the uh, south of them, in the two countries like that? They, my, my father was, uh, he was, prepared. I don't know whether he got his preparation in Shetland, but I think he must have gotten it in Vancouver because Shetland was a place where you fished mm. and that was there, 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 there was no other. And I'm sure that he had to decide, I don't want to spend my life fishing, so uh, this is what I will do. So he t went seven years in order to get fully prepared for building we're doing furniture for a boat right, which means you or could be work with the building of boats and so on. And the the interesting thing was that when he left um, Shetland, and he left his girlfriend, and went all the way to Vancouver, he didn't tell her or talk to her about the fact that they would be getting married. Hmm. And so after quite a long time, he just decided to go back to his girlfriend now. He, had, he could afford to have a wife. He went to Shetland and my mother was absolutely astounded because she was engaged. Yeah. And she had, did not know that this other was going to occur. So uh, they came over to um, Vancouver and then then uh, uh, North Vancouver, and uh, I was born right at the time. You've got to write that 1920. You said anyway. We did not realize, I guess, that he he had the flu, and then it moved into this other. So I was born about the time that my father was ill, and because of that, my mother didn't know how to really handle things. But from there on. There was a separation all the way through because she didn't know how contagious this was. So we had separate dishes, oh. we had separate this and so on. And I missed the kind of a hugging I think a oh. father would have gotten because uh, they were so afraid sure. of this. And my my two brothers were well well along in front of me, one six and a half years, the other eight and a half years older than I, but that's the way I came into the world. Hmm. And um, my father was a wonderful human being, and whenever my m mother and father would cross the inlet between Vancouver and North Vancouver to get together with two the Shetlanders and another group who came together once a year for a big party and so on, then they had to get me home, and we came up in a streetcar as far as we could go, and then we walked up the out the the 
the beginning of Grouse Mountain. Mm -hmm. And now I got hugs because I was asleep and my dad had to carry me all the way oh, home. Oh, sure. Um, so uh, um, uh, we lived, they, 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 by the time that I uh, uh, was, uh, that going to school was uh, very, very close to the beginning of the Great Depression. And um, uh, there is something I've written about, and that is uh, that uh, I, I did not particularly want to go, to go to school at all. I was enjoying my life so much because up in the mountains, so many wonderful things. And uh, uh, my father would be working, building a house or something, and my mother and I were there for the day, and oh boy, wonderful family support and my two brothers were, were in the elementary school. Um, a neighbor, uh, uh, a, a boy who was in the high school, uh, walked with my mother all the way down the hill and all the way to D North Star School. Um, we came to the end of the, of the, of the um, uh, streetcar, and then we, at that point, we took a right-hand turn and went west toward where the school was, which we had never seen. We, we got to where we saw this building, and I turned and ran hmm. the other way on the way home. My mother asked Ken to catch me, which he did, and so I came, and I walked with the three of them all the way to school. And uh, anyway, uh, the, f the first grade turned out to be a good, a good uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, midway in the elementary school, um, the principal came into the room and said that uh, Miss, I, and, and it, it would be a fictitious name now, uh, she was going to be gone for several days and she hoped we'd all be nice and be, be good and, and, and make sure everything would would, would be fine, there'd be a substitute, and so on and forth. Um, the regular teacher came back, and uh, she had, I think she was three or four days at least. This was 1926. If you look at 1926, the uh, Dick and Jane reading procedure was just starting. Mm. But there was also this other way to learn reading, which I call hieroglyphics, which it isn't, of course, because I can't remember of, of remember of it. Anyway, the teacher came back, and all of a sudden, I discovered that we were doing this stuff on the chalkboard and so on, and we were listening and so on, and that was the way you read. Very near the end of that first year at school, uh, my parents got a letter from my teacher saying that John would be repeating first grade. Hmm. Uh, because he doesn't know how to read. Well, because I didn't understand this kind of reading that she'd been teaching for the last half of the year, my parents had noticed that when I was reading at night and I was making out to them that I knew how to read and I would read to them, I wasn't reading at all. I memorized it. Mm. So that instead of learning to read, read somewhere, I was memorizing the, the reader, the... the, uh, the um, uh, Dick and Jane readers, the f the person who was producing, working with those readers and so on, and uh, was in Chicago, and happened to be a colleague of mine. Away later, when when I took my doctorate at the University of Chicago. Okay, all right. So she they, they get this note. What do we do? This was the only time in all my life that my father ever interfered with my schooling, the teachers, or anything like that. And he went, went to see the, the, the principal, and he said, John was reading quite a bit before he went to school. Mm -hmm. And I was learning to read from the, from the uh, uh, breakfast, you know, we, we had a package with, with breakfast things and so on. I'd learn, I'd, I'd watch until I could read that. Then there was the streetcar, and it had a lot of advertising, and I learned to read that. Um, and, and that was my learning reading. 
And my dad said, look, he was reading before he went to school, and I, I will be responsible for what happens if he gets into the second grade. I will take full responsibility. The, the principal agreed we'd do that. The teacher who was with them in the discussion said, no good will come of this. Wow. <laughs> so um, I was in the second grade, and uh, in the third grade, I passed the third and the fourth. Hmm. And so my father had been right. Um, so anyway, that was uh, uh, then af I think uh, at the age of nine, we moved. I went to another elementary school, way quite part different, not near the, the mountain, but down in the town of North Vancouver. And uh, then uh, to the high school and then to uh, uh, preparing in a normal school to become an elementary school teacher. How did those experiences in school inspire the person you became? The school? And the, your experiences in school. In school. Inspire the educational researcher. Oh, I, I, I didn't try to run and run away anymore. No, um, uh, schooling was fine. My friends were there. Were there. Uh, I, I was a I was a fairly fragile youngster, as it turned out, and about mid-year, I'd usually have to be home several days because I was not doing very well. But, but uh, lo and behold, I began to discover there was such a thing as sports. Hmm. Uh, and uh, so uh, it, as when summer approached, it was, it was great. We had a soccer ball at least, and so at recess, you'd, you'd, you'd get to play soccer. And then um, uh, uh, we, we, you didn't have baseball in school because it was into the deep, deep, deep depression, and the mm -hmm. schools couldn't afford all of the stuff with the for 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 uh, baseball. But there was softball, and we had got a softball. Usually there was string stringing from it because the school didn't have enough money to buy it, and so we would do that. So. It, it was, let me put it this way, it was all a great sport, mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole works. And uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, living on the side of a mountain was great. Uh, there were bears not very far away. You had to be very careful p picking uh, huckleberries in the spring because very often there would be a, a mama bear with a baby on the other side of it, so you better get out of there. So living in that kind of environment uh, where we um, knew there were very few people, uh, uh, it happened fortunately that there was a, a boy a quarter of a mile away who was my age. There were two a little younger than I was, and then later another uh, person who lived quite a distance away. And that that was your weekend. Sure. And after that, we had uh, uh, my brother, my my uh, Bill, who was six and a half years older than I, but Andy was eight and a, eight and a half older than I, and Andy was now at work. And um, uh, it was, I guess it was now came the weekend, and the weekend was wonderful because we'd set up off the mountain and so on, but we always had our chores to do in the morning on Saturday, and when we had won that, we could go and play, and also we might get a nickel, and we could go all the way down and, and buy something from the grocery store. Why did you decide to become a teacher? Well, I could, I could be, on one hand, I, 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 it could be there wasn't, anything else. Hmm. Uh, we were in the Deep Depression. Mm -hmm. uh, the Depression uh, uh, was a whopper. Uh, we talk about a, a compression today, there was like 20%. Mm -hmm. When um, there was a, a huge company in Vancouver that was headquarters were in the USA, and when they would announce that they had a position, there would be at least 200 men there 
for one job. Um, the uh, I think I became a teacher because of the third grade teacher. Huh. When I was in the room where I was in the third and fourth or the second, no, the second and third grade or the third and fourth, I can't remember which, was the year that I went through two years. Mm -hmm. And that other, the other room was easy because on the, I was on this side of the room in the second grade and I was in this side of the room on, on the third grade. So that's the way I did two years in that, in that grade. And Miss Hamilton was a, a marvelous teacher. She was not, she was very frail. Um, she lived within walking distance of the school and every, at least once a month, she would take us for a walk. And when she took us for that walk, she took us to her home where she had a clock that came out and made the, with a bird or something of the sort, and it would... <laughs> Cuckoo? Yep. And th we were just, oh, this was wonderful. She'd always have some cookies or something of the sort. Also, when recess came, rather than just letting us, well, not recess, because in, in recess the problem was get, getting to the boys' room or the girls' room or whatnot, and, and it, as the warmth came on, uh, it's amazing now in, 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 uh, as one matures that you've got to drink a lot of water. That school had one little place to get water. Mm. And, and in the morning, the break was 15 minutes. Mm. There was no point setting out. You would stand in that thing to get a drink of water. Only trouble was the school bell would go so you wouldn't get it. Now, how we got along without water, I do not know. Um, but Miss Hamilton, and incidentally, I think Miss Hamilton is the only teacher I had whose name I, I still remember. And in uh, my book, Romances with Schools, her name is still there, and she was the real teacher. The others I made up. Sure. But during the day somewhere, when we became restless as youngsters, she didn't let that last very long, and she'd say, let's go out. And we would go out for something or other. Or if we didn't go out and it was raining, and it ra rained a great deal there, she would have a story. Mm. And she would read us the story. And she would read it to the point where there was something just wonderful that we wanted to get, but we didn't get it that day. We'd get it the next day. Sure. Um, the, the kind that she had, I remember because I was uh, from, t from, I think, uh, when I was in her grade, I still hadn't come out of this, whatever it was of, of having a cold or this, that, or that, or the other, and I would stay home and read. Um, at, at the end of that year where I was from the second grade and the third grade, the two, after having, having, having taken the first grade because the, the principal allowed it to go, uh, my brother was uh, walking home and along the way he bumped into Miss Hamilton and another lady who were walking up this long walk to where we lived, and she recognized him, she, even though he was in the high school. And she said that she had a book for me. And uh, she didn't know where we, she, she, she had lost her way. And uh, so he, she gave um, uh, him the book. And it was because for something or rather I had done, she had something to recognize that she didn't do for everybody. Only the person receiving it mm. knew it. Mm -hmm. And so I took home a book. And I don't think that was my, that wasn't my first book because my mother, when I was ill, which was frequent, my mother would take the long walk to the school, which had a little library, and get a book and take it. But I would have gobbled it up in a couple of days. Then I was lucky enough to run into a, a, a young person my age, and he was fortunate enough to be of a fairly wealthy family and could get whatever he wanted. His parents were separated, but he was still providing very well for them. 
and we were always waiting for the Tarzan series of books to come out or some uh, um, somewhere in Florida with uh, uh, the motorboat boys and we couldn't wait to get these so books 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 oh, sure. uh, and how wonderful to have a friend who had these 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 uh, books so um, he, he ultimately became a psychiatrist but um, uh, I, I uh, had, I had decided to think really from this Hamilton, and maybe a big part of it was because you could get a job in the Northwest Territories. And the Northwest Territories was where Canada discovered that they could grow wheat way up in the ice country part of uh -huh. British Columbia. Hmm. And uh, so they needed teachers. Hmm. And uh, I was figuring that that's where I was uh, going to go. Uh, it's interesting, in the North Vancouver, there were two physicians. One of them did, nobody liked very much, and the other, but, but he, did get the, the, he did get the wealthy people. And then there was this wonderful fellow who loved, who just liked children, and he was great. And it turned out that he always would sort of take, take care of us for our parents at times, and when he found out I was going to be going to uh, up away up into the northwest part. He knew that the thing that happened to these teachers was that they were lonely and so they would have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatnot and marry and whatnot and what that was the way it went. And he was worried about that because mm. he didn't think this was the way to go. So it was his responsibility to tell me, as a boy, how to behave with the girls.